Welcome back to Elden Ring Ultimate Guide Part 31. Today we are doing Noxtella and we are in Rani's Rise, in case you're wondering. We came here at the end of the last episode and we're just going to head up to the top to presumably speak to Rani now that we've done Sir Lewis's quest. Which we also done at the end of the last video. I'm not sure if we have done at this point. Um, but if not, this will be us handing Rani the Finger Slayer Blade that we picked up in Nokron, and in exchange for that we get the Karian Inverted Statue, which is used in the, uh, study hall earlier in Limgrave that we avoided going in, because if we avoid going in there, we can do it all at once. Yes. Uh, which is, like, one of the forthcoming episodes, there's, like, a few, that like, this episode and the next one and the next one and the next one are effectively all linked to Rani's quest. Yeah, it's very long, very involved. You could have done it significantly earlier, but it does mean that you miss out on uh, doing Celibus's quest. Speaking of, we just got his bell bearing and his armor set, the preceptor's set, uh, because after giving Rani the Finger Slayer blade, Celibus bites the fucking dust, and we're going to yes. go check on Pidia now, who Hence seems to be why. having some trouble. Hence why we've done his quest uh, in the last episode. Because we want to get his quest out of the way. That way we can get everything from it before he dies. So uh, this is Pedia. He drops Dolores' puppet and Pedia's Bell Baron. Then we're heading back to the uh, Loretta. Is it Loretta? Yeah, that's right. Loretta's boss room. That way we can just head to the Three Sisters. And now, after all this is done... After giving Rani the Finger Slayer Blade, we, I think this, that's the trigger that opens up this rise, which will allow us to go to Nokoron. Or Nokron, actually, it's not Nokoron. Noxtella. It's all the same thing, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, no, it literally isn't, but when you climb this ladder, uh, make sure to sort of do a 180, because you can get Rani's armor set there, the Snow Witch set. It's in a sort of sneaky chest that you're designed to miss, basically. Yep, and this sending gate will take you to Noxtella. Or specifically Ainsel River Main, which leads to Noxtella. We're going to pick up the miniature Rani, and how anybody ever figured this quest out, I'll never know. But we're going to rest at this grace, and then we're going to talk to the miniature Rani, which we've got a prompt at this grace to do. We're going to do that three times. And then she'll eventually start talking. Yeah, this area is not very long. Um, isn't really very involved. It's just a lot of picking up items along a straight line. And then there's a little divergence at the end, so it should be easy enough to follow what's going on. Yes, and she will ask you to uh, take care of the Baleful Shadow, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, now we're at... Uh... Ul Palace Ruins, and there's one of those, um, what are they called again? Starfish? Malformed Star. Yeah, that. So, what we want to do is we want to take care of this thing immediately, because it is a colossal pain in the ass. It's getting peppered constantly. So, what we're going to do is, I think we whip out the bow, or maybe we just wail on its face, actually. Oh, we just yeah, go for the wail on its face option. Because uh, it actually has very little HP. Um, so watch out for that attack. So when it, like, you know, charges up, um, you can have a, the chance to go ham on it. And um, initially, we were just trying to avoid this thing. But actually, given how weak it is, you, given where we are, uh, given the fact that we're doing Rani's quest now, which is much later into the game than it is presented to you, and the reason for that is because we wanted to do Zulavis' quest uh, via killing Dung Eater, and you have to wait until this point in the game in order to do that. So we're actually a little bit higher level than you normally would be. So if you're having trouble killing that malformed star because you came here earlier, then you can just use the bow and take it easy. Just, you know, dip out, hit him with a few arrows, avoid the attack. And then just do exactly what we are doing, just follow the path we're taking, picking up the ghost glove warts, picking up the clay man's ashes, and just picking up whatever the fuck is on the floor. Now, I think we just missed a glove wart over there, um, so just double check that. 
maybe we go back and get it. But I literally think we just we we missed one. Um, it may well have been a glove war, but it might have been a Dukist over, because maybe. in passing they look quite similar. If it was a glove war, I make sure to pick that up when you go there because free glove war. Why would you not? So there we go. There's some more glove. I mean, we do have a lot of glove war, but. It did look like we may have missed one. It might have been mistaken as a different thing. But yeah, that's a whole bunch of glove war we picked up. And I think we picked up a stone sword key and we picked up the Clayman's Ashes. Clayman's Ashes are okay. Um, they're very tanky, but they don't do a lot of damage. Um, something I will say, quite nice. Oh, we're fighting the giant ants again, by the way, because we're in Ainsel River. But um, something I will say about doing Rani's quest, if you do want to do it earlier in the game, um, when it's presented to you, so to speak. One of the nice things about doing it is along the path of Rani's quest, so Nokron into Insul River Main, into Noxtella, and so on, um, it gives you every Ghost Glove War you need to get the Mimic to plus 10. That is a nice benefit, actually. Yeah, so it means you can go into fights like Morgoth, Moog, everything sort of after... Um, after Rani's quest is presented to you with a plus 10 mimic, so it will be doing even better than it already is in our footage. Obviously, we recommend just waiting until this point to do it, because, strictly speaking, the game is actually... Like, obviously, you'll get souls and stuff, uh, and you'll be able to level up during Rani's quest, but actually, you clearly don't need it. If you're doing everything else, uh, the game's still... Presented is pretty easy overall, actually, if you're as well-equipped as we are. Somehow I missed that jump attack. It's embarrassing for me, if anything. <laughs> These are a couple more of those gravity stone uh, minor guys. They don't actually have any drops. Nothing significant anyway, but now we're back in the lower half of Insul River. That came yes. up in a much, much earlier part, and we're about to go kill the second malformed star. But on the way, we're going to grab the item from this chest, which is an excellent weapon for an intelligence build. And I know some people are asking in the comments about this. The Wing of Estelle, the Ash of War of this is essentially pre-patched Flame of the Red Mains. It will break stance incredibly quickly. Um, yeah, it is exceptionally um... powerful. It's fast. It's just all around a fantastic option for an intelligence build. I agree. I played about with it, and the Wing of Astel is definitely one of the best weapons I've used in the entire game. It's fucking phenomenal. So, if you're looking to switch it up, um, yeah, Wing of Astel, fan-fucking-tastic, and it breaks poise like a motherfucker. So, definitely a cool option. Now that detour's done, though, we're just going to return to the main path. Um, basically retracing our steps back to, back to where we were before, where the first set of ants were. And the one, the one unique ant I say unique, there's a few of them, but the one unique ant that has a giant skull plate for a face. Very cool. Yeah, actually, something to mention is that, is that the ant, that ant can drop its, uh, it effectively drops a shield, right? I'm, I'm, I'm remembering that right? So you can get the ant skull plate, but it's actually in a chest in Noxtella. It doesn't drop from oh. those enemies, but it is okay. based on their head, which is pretty cool. So now we're in Noxtella. Um... Again, fairly simple. There's an upper area bit, and then there's a lower area bit. Um, so it's kind of split up. Now we're going to talk to Rani. So it's the doll again. I, I think this is uh, just like a story. It's not, it's not necessary in order to do anything, but you can talk to Rani and get some dialogue. Picking up some magic grease, and then we're going to do the, up, the upper part first, and then we'll take the lower part. Because the lower part is actually the the act like the progression to the next area, and the upper part is items, etc. So the enemy we're fighting here is a Nox Swordstress. We've seen them a couple times before, but they can drop their entire armor set. So the Swordstress armor and headpiece, as well as the Nox Gauntlets and the boots. Um, the Nox Gauntlets and boots are shared with all the Nox enemies. Um, including this enemy here, which is a Night Maiden. They can drop the Night Maiden's crown, the Night Maiden's chest piece, and the Nox Gauntlets and boots. And the third enemy type that we'll fight a little later on is the Nox Monk, that can drop the Gauntlets and boots exactly the same as the others, but we'll drop the Monk's headpiece and chest piece. We also picked up the Ant's head plate from that chest in the room as well, so pretty cool. 
So these guys you can kind of mostly avoid. They're uh, not particularly threatening. We get the Ghost Glove Warp Peddler. Uh, go sorry, Ghost Glove Warp Picker Bell Baron. Um, so we can give that to Twin Maiden Husks to get some Ghost Glove Warp. Although I doubt that's ever coming up. I think the game easily gives you enough Glove Warp to probably level up everything you'd want to level up. So we're heading back here. Um, hidden away around this corner is the Archer's Ashes. Now, they're similar in a sense to the boys, but way less effective than the boys. Um, it's a bunch of the Fallen Hawk Archers. They can inflict frostbite at range, which is nice. But so can the boys, but the boys also can't die. So, you know, you be the judge of whichever you think is better. Prayerful Strike, nice and effective against... Uh... The Mercury blobs. Silver tears. I'm gonna call them Mercury blobs. <laughs> uh, the ones it with the, the metal plate are significantly harder to kill. Yeah, it is nice whenever you take damage, just being able to use Prayerful Strike to simply say no to damage. Yeah, I would in fact like you to take damage and I take no damage. How about that? That's a good Enemies trait. cannot harm you without your consent. Use prayerful strike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, I think one of these guys is kind of stronger than it should be. I remember I had no one test and one of these guys killed me. <laughs> Embarrassingly. Yeah. The, the, the Nox Monks can hit pretty hard. That big sweeping uh, attack they were just doing with the flowing hammer. Um, it can catch you off guard but uh, not too hard to deal with. And for that, you get the Night Maiden and Swordstress puppet, which is actually very strong. Um, it's a very, very good Asher Wall. It, that really is a direct upgrade to the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that really is a direct upgrade to the to the Imp, sorry. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so yeah, make, here we're make sure you have, your, um, you have your shield up for that. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, holy shit. <laughs> Interestingly though, you can just you can just block it somehow, but it really comes at you at some fucking some pace. Jesus Christ! Again, prayerful strike quite good against it. I really kind of like any big bash attack. Um. Little trick for you here: um, there is a big ball above the uh, above the doorway. So if you stand far enough back and you're using a bow and arrow. You can actually hit that thing to bait it to come to the ground, and it's too big to fit through the door, so you can just kill it through the doorway, risk-free, because if you were to go in that room and go grab the chest at the far end, the door would close behind you and lock you in with the big ball. Very fair. A very fair trap. Now these balls I mean, it... all drop a larval tier, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, we've already been refunded for the two we had to spend for the fucking Law of Regression thing. In and there's a great ghost glove warp. So we use that to finalize the mimic, I think. Yeah, that's right. Ghost for unique ashes. Um, grave for more generic mob type ashes. Despite the fact that there's one of all of them. So it's a, just, it's a very arbitrary distinction, if you ask me. But grabbing a smith and stone six. We don't really need that anymore. Um, that would be more relevant if you came here immediately after... Uh, when would be when would it be that you'd come here immediately, like after um, Siofra? Like, yeah, after knock after, after knock after run, after I suppose. Up. Yeah. So remember that you can come here after doing um, Nocron and the Aqueduct, and you do get some decent items in this area, like some high-level smithing stones, plenty of larval tears, some decent spirit ashes. It is worth it doing it at that point, but you do miss out on Celibus's quest, so it's really dealer's choice. If you can stand missing out on his sorceries and on the magic scorpion charm, then uh, yeah, maybe do come here earlier, but if not, um, the rewards are going to feel a little underwhelming by contrast to how they would feel if you did it earlier, but still, these items are worth having. Yeah, and they only feel underwhelming in terms of, like, like, uh, game progression, so, like, 
golden runes and like smithing stones in terms of like the overall loot like the unique stuff it's still just as just as good as anywhere else really So we're using the bow to try and uh, get a little bit of damage out here. Turns out that this encounter can be a somewhat trickier than it looks. Uh, these guys can hit for a fucking crazy amount, as you can see. <laughs> yeah, I'm not kidding, holy shit. <laughs> Thanks, Mimic Tear, for um, not doing fuck all. But yeah, okay, grab, <laughs> grabbing, our, <laughs> grabbing our souls again, and then... Um, Okay, we summon the Mimic Tear again. You could summon the boys. The boys, not bad. Uh, obviously, that's like two boys to any one of them. Uh, lapping out Wild Strikes, probably very good, actually. So you could have Wild Strikes pre-prepared for this encounter, just in case. In saying that, I don't think these guys actually drop anything relevant. I don't really think you even need to fight them, now that I think about it. Not really, but the um, chair thrown at the end... Um, or chair crypt or whatever the hell they're called um, has a chest inside it so if you go inside there and try and grab the moon of noxtella talisman which gives you extra spell slots uh, without killing these enemies then there's a solid chance that they just gang up on you in the doorway and kill you that is true and you definitely yes. don't want that happening yeah see tiny cramped space this, this would not be good But now we're heading out, and this allows us to go down to the bottom level. Um, but we're still going to warp back to the first grace and take it from the top of the bottom. The start of the oh, bottom. Yeah. yeah. The really, really the only reason we're up on this platform at all is to grab this. Um, not that we need it at this point. Our flask is maxed out. But if you are short on uh, Golden Seeds... Say you skipped a couple of ulcerated tree spirits or something because you just don't like fighting them, and who could blame you? That is where you would get another. And we also picked up a stone sword key. But now we can warp back to the start in Oxtella and uh, try again, I suppose. Now, isn't there like some weird thing that you can do with these guys? It's kind of funny. Yeah, if you're able to knock the. Uh, rider off of the ant by dealing enough stance damage to do so but not enough damage to kill them the ant will actually aggro onto the rider <laughs> which is very funny yeah it's a drawstring holy grease I'm really glad we picked that up ah pointless item but worse <laughs> so killing these uh, I think this is the monk variant yeah, the ones with the hammer to the monk. Man, I'm, I'm really trigger happy with the prayerful strike. Yeah, prayerful strike's not gonna happen. Stop trying to make prayerful strike happen. Yeah, I should just be using lion's claw the whole time. I, actually, prayerful strike is worthwhile using, but I just really wish I was using lion's claw for more of the guide because, like we've said, it is like kinda better in a lot of situations compared to Asla. Just yeah, we haven't mentioned it already. Hyper. Lion's Claw is good, by the way. Yeah, yeah. The hyper armor on that attack is just... its It just puts it head and shoulders above like almost every other attack in the game. Grabbed another Celestial Dew there from that little inlet with the Serpent Snails. Um, doesn't really matter if you don't pick that up. Just don't attack any NPCs and then you'll never need one. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Although that being said, actually, there is one slight niche use case for it, which is at one point Rani will uh, dismiss you if you progress her quest in a certain way. She will dismiss you if you keep uh, pestering her after she dismisses you. You will just die, and all of the NPCs relating to Rani's quest will disappear. Now, if that happens to you, use a Celestial Dew at the Church of Vows, and they will all come back. All will be forgiven. I can't even remember what the the criteria is for her to do that, because, I'm, like, every single time I've always just spoke to her and she's been fine. It's to do with learning that she was responsible for the Knight of the Black Knives um before having spoken to her initially so if you'd spoken to roger after getting the uh black knife print 
you'd have found that information out. If you go to Rani with that information directly, she doesn't want to work with you. Sure. And so, yeah, if you continue bothering her after that, um, she will just kill you. So be and careful then... here, because there's a lot of these slimes, and uh, it's probably worthwhile that you should maybe be fighting these guys, just for the sake of time. We were just blasting through everything. You kind of don't want to get mobbed up on, so just be careful there. Uh, specifically, I wasn't fighting things just to to not be boring with it, but you know, I'm, I'm taking the risk that I could just get fucking annihilated out of nowhere because I get jammed into a corner with 40 slimes. Yeah, this could happen at any point, yeah. yeah um, the ones yeah. that are seemingly electrically charged, by the way, will detonate on death, um, which is kind of funny because it means you can get chain reactions to occur where yeah. you can kill them and it will kill them all it's very cool so that scarab didn't have anything in it but there's another celestial do there's actually despite how big this part of the game is and despite how important it looks there's actually not a lot of really anything relevant in the bottom part of noxdale at all the very important item coming up in just a second though because despite the fact that we have great ghost love war we've had one since we killed the dragonkin soldier of noxtella um we don't yet have a ghost love war nine but just around the corner is exactly what we need i think that's nice. the last piece of the puzzle we require to get a plus 10 mimic tier And up and coming soon will be the Baleful Shadow that um, Rani was talking about. That she Speaking wants of to talking kill. and Rani, you can do that here as well. Now, I want to say that I put on Lion's Claw for the Baleful Shadow. Um... I think what happens, I'm fairly certain I die on my first attempt at this thing. Turns out the Baleful Shadow is actually kind of difficult, um, surprisingly. Uh, and, and, and it's difficult for this point in the game. If you were to come here when it's initially presented to you, this thing is actually going to probably give you quite a hard time. Um, I think what ends up happening is I use... I might... Oh, I think I think I made, I think the cut happened there because... Yeah, I'm now using Ground Slam on my main weapons in a Prayerful Strike. I tried to use Prayerful Strike, it just was not happening. But Ground Slam is actually really good because it does pancake the Baleful Shadow. Um, again, Lion's Claw would be better. But there is another thing you can you can do to kill this, actually. Um, it's kind of a secret technique. There is a elevator shaft nearby. It progresses you onto the Lake of Rot. If you can lead the Baleful Shadow into that room, and then you hit it with a rejection, like we did to the NPCs with the Great Jar, you can actually push it down the lift shaft and kill it instantly. It's a bit finicky to pull off, but if you can do it, it's very funny. I think if you don't have access to Crown Slam or yeah, like some kind of pancake method, then yeah, it's actually not a terrible idea. So we get a discarded palace key. Um, and as you can see, I picked up some souls, so I did die indeed to that Baleful Shadow. Just because clearly its poise isn't too high, so Ground Slam or Lion's Claw, very, very effective because if something is not attacking you, then they're not doing any damage to you. But the Baleful Shadow is very aggressive, so if you can't kind of keep breaking its stance or pancaking it, it's just going to keep coming for you, and that's ultimately how it died. And Prayerful Strike was not enough to overcome that. However, Aslam is enough to overcome almost everything this game throws at you, surprisingly, so... <laughs> But now, back to Hugh, sell your runes. We have 14 of that one for some fucking reason. And now we should be able to upgrade the Mimic tier to max. Yep. Very good. And fuck it. We'll, we'll upgrade the boys to plus 9 as well. You bet your ass we'll upgrade the boys to plus 9. And we're going to level up. So we're putting more into mind. Uh, you could put it into strength, but I think more mind means we can do more weapon arts. Which is pretty good. Uh, and then we're just back to the Lake of Rot. And that is it. For part 31. And okay. There we go. That's Noxtella. Done. Join us in part 32. Where we're going to be doing the Lake of Rot. Now other than liking and subscribing. You can follow us on Twitter. 
You can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out. And if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined. But the best thing you can do is just comment anything. Just comment anything. Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.